First Peter chapter 3, I'm entitled, entitling this message tonight, Getting Along with One Another. Uh, this might even be relevant to some of you. Getting along with one another. Here's the passage, 1 Peter 3, verse 8 and following. To sum up, all of you, be harmonious, sympathetic, brotherly, kind-hearted, and humble in spirit, not returning evil for evil or insult for insult, but giving a blessing instead. For you were called for the very purpose that you might inherit a blessing. For the one who desires love, life to love and see good days must keep his tongue from evil and his lips from speaking deceit. He must turn away from evil and do good. He must seek peace and pursue it. There were a group of uh, theologians that were discussing the subject of predestination and free will. And the longer they talked, the more their discussion became a heated conflict. And these theologians were split into two opposing camps. Well, one poor man didn't know what he believed for sure. So he slipped into the ranks of the predestination camp. And the predestination camp asked the man why he was joining them. And very innocently, he answered, I came of my own free will. <laughs> free will? You can't join us. Get over there. So the man retreated to the opposite group and faced the same question. What are you doing in the free will camp? The poor man said, honestly, I was sent here. Leave at once, they demanded. You can't join us unless you come of your own free will. Well, there's not just a division over Calvinism versus Arminianism. There are conflicts, division over charismatic gifts. One group believes the spiritual gifts were taken away once the Bible was completed and canonized, and we call these people cessationists. Last week, John MacArthur, a man I respect greatly, and I read his commentaries on the Word, had a conference called Strange Fire. His goal was to say to the world that people who believe that the Holy Spirit operates through spiritual gifts today, like healing, prophecy, speaking in tongues, are dangerous people. Look out. It's interesting that other reform preachers, like John Piper and Mark Driscoll, seem to have a major disagreement with their fellow reform preacher, John MacArthur. Mark Driscoll uh, said this, Last week, in talking about the cessationist camp, that is, those who believe that the Holy Spirit has ceased to operate through his gifts today, Mark Driscoll said, they think that God is Father, Son, and Holy Bible. John Piper tweeted yesterday this verse out of 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, Do not quench the Spirit, do not despise prophecies, but test everything, hold fast to what is good. Well, there are divisions in the body around the world today, sometimes on theology, other times it's over personality, over competition, over all kinds of things that are not of the Lord. Well, I'm not preaching this message this evening because we have division in our camp, but maybe it is preventative medicine. And of course, in any congregation, you're going to find that there are people that have conflicts with one another, husband and wife, teenagers with parents, flatmates. Is that possible? If you don't know what a flatmate is, I think it's an English, English term, apartment mates, whatever you want to call them. Who's, who paid the electrical bill last month? Isn't it your turn? You know, all those kinds of things. There are conflicts between employers and employees. And among the body of Messiah, there are times when we don't get along with one another. And I want to tell you, it does great damage. And I'm going to tell you how. First of all, let me read this passage from 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 11 to 13. Paul writes his first letter to this charismatic congregation. My brothers, some from Chloe's household, have informed me that there are quarrels among you. What I mean is this. One of you says, I follow Paul. Another, I follow Apollos. Another, I follow Cephas. Still another, I follow the Messiah. Is the Messiah divided? Division was even in the Philippian congregation. Paul says to the Philippians in chapter 4, verse 2, I plead with Yehudia, and I plead with Syntyche to agree with each other in the Lord. I heard someone call these two ladies odious and soon touchy. 
<laughs> well, you might tell me that you've got the perfect marriage. Everything's just fine between the two of you. That reminds me of the lady who was convinced her marriage was perfect or would be perfect. She went to premarital counseling with her husband-to-be, and the counselor asked her, how do you two handle disagreements? The soon-to-be-married woman claimed that she and her fiancé never have conflicts. The counselor gently smiled and assured her that every couple has conflict. But again, she insisted that they always get along. Well, the bride-in-waiting suggested the counselor move on to another topic, but that counselor was dogged and continued to press on this matter of conflict in their relationship. Well, when the counselor refused to change the subject, she started arguing bitterly. The young man that she was about to marry sensed there was mounting tension and started to make a peacekeeping comment. He no sooner began to speak when his adamant future wife jumped down his throat and yelled, and you stay out of this. <laughs> well, the passage we're studying tonight, 1 Peter chapter 3, is all about getting along with one another. It's a passage that promises that we will inherit blessing if we will get along with one another. Speaking of the blessing of unity, let me just share some of these blessings. Psalm 133, you know this passage, Behold how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Hinei matov umanayim, shevet achim gam yachad. And then it goes on to say, it is like the precious oil upon the head, running down on the beard, the beard of Aaron, running down on the edge of his garments. It is like the dew of Hermon, descending upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, life forevermore. There is blessing in getting along with one another. There is destruction and ruin when we don't get along with one another. Let me talk about some more blessings. There's the blessing of synergy when we get along with one another. When we blend our gifts and our talents together in teamwork, we can accomplish far more together than we can in our own individual camps. We're like a jigsaw puzzle. You know, there are protusions in one piece of the puzzle, and then there's indentations. But when you bring the protrusions and the indentations together, when you bring two pieces of the puzzle together, you start to see a wonderful picture. And when you finish the puzzle, it's a beautiful scene. And you know, that's the same with the body of Messiah. If we will take our strengths, those protrusions, that, and we fill in the weaknesses of others, and those who are weak in one area but are strong in another help the other person who's got some weaknesses, when you do it together, there's synergy and you accomplish far more for the kingdom of God. How many would say amen to that? Amen. Blessing comes when we are properly joined together in harmony or unity. There's blessings that come when we are able to get along with one another. People in our fractured world suddenly take note of our ability to hang together and say, now that makes their Messiah believable. Is that true? John 17, Yeshua prayed this prayer. In verse 20 and verse 21, I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you and me, in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. Our unity, our oneness, our harmony, our getting along together proves to a fractured world that the Messiah we serve really was sent by the Father to save them and to make this world a place of peace and security and love, which is ultimately what he will do when he comes the second time. But there's even one more blessing that we will inherit if we learn to walk together our prayers will get answered more and more. Check out Matthew 18, 19. Yeshua declares, again, I say to you that if two of you agree on earth concerning anything that they ask, it will be done for them by my Father in heaven. If they agree on earth, then whatever they ask will be done for them by my Father in heaven. Don't you want to experience the blessing of God? Don't you want to inherit this kind of blessing? We inherit it here on earth, but the greater blessing will be when we get to heaven. That's the end of my message for tonight.
Next week, I'm going to talk to you about ways that we can increase our ability to walk together, to work together, to be in harmony and unity together, and show how blessing will abound among us if we will do that. We're going to partake of the Lord's Supper tonight, and I think this is an appropriate message for that. If you've got issues with somebody, unresolved, and you haven't done your part to bring resolution and reconciliation, ask the Holy Spirit to show you things you could do to repair that relationship so you might come into that place of harmony with that one you're in conflict with right now. Paul tells us to do that. In fact, he says, if we don't recognize the body, if we don't recognize the unity of the body, the oneness of Yeshua's body, then many of you are going to be sick and weak. He says some even die because they don't recognize the body of the Lord. It's a stern warning. Let's partake of this, having examined our hearts, letting the Holy Spirit take his, his spotlight and checking out those corners of our life to make sure we're clean and right and right with one another and right with him. So I'm asking the ushers to come now to prepare, prepare to distribute the, uh, the bread and the, the juice, and we're going to celebrate the Lord who's done so much for us. Amen? Amen.